Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, never have I stood on a stage and felt like this. That speech was one of the most powerful things I have heard in my life. I shed a tear as I sat there and I'm very close to doing the same thing again now. That speech will live with me for the rest of my life. And that is what the speaker intended. That wasn't just some trite pulling at the heartstrings. That was a genuine experience that somebody felt and somehow had the talent and the courage to take it and turn it into something that she could share with us all. And I bow to you for that. I sat at the start of the speech with my notepad and I wrote down trite things like big heels and little heels, gesture a bit too small. By the time I got to the end, I stopped writing. There was no point. The speech had me, it had everyone. I'm sure if I run it back through in my mind tomorrow, I will remember things that were said during that speech that I could have offered as advice in speechcraft. But they're not here just now because of the power of that speech. There are a couple of things that did strike me that could have been used to make it even more powerful. Because fortunately, they came to me before the emotional content did. 1.1 million people. That could have been made better by something along the lines of, can you imagine standing in Dublin city centre and finding it an empty city? Because that's the number of people that died in Auschwitz. The other thing was perhaps a bit of poetic license when we saw in our mind's eye that mind of grey, that mound of grey and brown shoes. Forget the brown, just tell us about that mound of grey shoes with the occasional spattering of a blood red shoe in amongst it to remind us that these women were once two shoe chicks. A brave speech, a courageous speech, and a speech that will remain with me all my days, and I hope with all of you. Mm -hmm.